This book haul is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> If you want, it's Emily Fox. Today's video is going to be my first book haul of 2023. I'm super excited because I know I've been saying that <laughs> last couple of months, every book haul, but this is one of my best book hauls ever. I have been finding a lot of books I'm really interested in in a mix of genres, like whether it's like sci-fi, fantasy, mystery, thriller, and nonfiction. I'm very excited. So it's a mix of new and used books. We're going to go through it. We're going to start with some of the ones that I have read before. I've been trying to collect physical copy of the books that I've read and loved because I want my physical, my bookshelves to represent my taste. And I feel like I, I tried to, well, you can see, actually, I turned them around for a different challenge. I'm going to switch them around soon. But you can see that my favorite sections, the ones basically where every book is turned around, I've been trying to, you know, make these little sections of favorites so you can see them in my background. Usually I'm a little bit further, but... I kind of am enjoying the lighting, the lights, the Christmas lights. So yes, I want to own physical copy of the books that I've read and loved. So I finally found a copy of The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. Listen, if you buy used books, you know that really small ones and the really big ones get destroyed all the time. I've seen copies of this one before, but they're always so damaged. So when I saw this one, I was like, this is it. You are mine. I love this. This is an adult fantasy standalone, even though now the author is coming out with more books in the same universe, which I'm a big hater of authors that come up with a standalone that becomes a series because it feels like money grab but I love this universe so so much that I'm not even mad I will be reading the prequel that's coming out at the end of February but yes adult fantasy uh it's kind of gay and it has dragons yeah yeah so I've loved it my only complaint really was, well, the end battle, it's like a battle between good and evil. It's a little quick, but I wanted more about the witches because they're cool. They <laughs> They are. So uh, yes, this is the first book that I picked. I'm really happy to finally have a copy. I read this when it came out. Was it 2019 or something? Yes, 2019. So I've been looking for a copy of this forever. And then the other book that I pick, I do own a copy of it, but I became shallow. I'm blaming booktube, okay? And I'm trying to find pretty editions when I can. And I got this one. The Humans by Matt Haig. I have the one with a nose on it. It's just, I can put a picture. It, it's, there's nothing wrong with it. It's funny if you have read the book, you know, the whole nose thing, yes. But I thought this edition was prettier. Is it my favorite edition of all time? Maybe not, but I think this is by far the prettiest edition. There's another one with the dog on it, but it looks like a children's book, right? So yes, I love this book, adult sci-fi. Uh, an alien is sent to Earth to kill the man that found a math equation that we're not ready for, and he has to, you know, take his place, become him in his body, and murder anyone else that knows about it. And it's kind of funny at first and becomes more serious, more philosophical throughout the book. And I wanted a predation, damn it. So I did it. <laughs> now, uh, let's go to books I have not read. The first one is two books, which I think are part of a series. I don't remember which one is the first one, but you have Doomsday Book and To Say Nothing of the Dog by Connie Willis. I think this might be the first one. I feel like the title, it rings a bell. I feel like I've heard this. And both of these are adult sci-fi that are time travel related, which I used to be more into like someone reliving the same day, same life, or like alternate universe more than like reliving this uh, time travel. <laughs> but I read Timeline last year by Michael Crichton and I realized, you know what? Time travel is actually fun too. So we're going to try this one or these ones. You're following someone at present day. And in this one, someone is in the 1940s. And this one, I think it might be further back, 14th century. So I don't know which one is the first one. I'll obviously look it up. But yes, I've heard that these are actually really good and even funny. So we'll check these out. I, I'm into time travel now, apparently. The next two books are from Book of the Month. If you don't know, Book of the Month is an online service for readers. Their mission is to promote new and emerging authors and help readers discover books that they'll love. Their team vets hundreds of books each month and give their subscribers a choice of new and early release books. You pick the one you're interested in and you get it sent to you. They have a great skip policy, which means that if for whatever reason you don't want to book that month, you can just skip it and you won't get charged. So I was able to choose the two books that I was the most intrigued by. The first one is What Lies in the Woods, which is a mystery thriller, an adult one. In this one, you're following this woman and when she was much younger, she went into the forest with some friends and 
things went really wrong. One of them was attacked and she was stabbed 17 times. Their testimony ended up uh, putting this serial killer in prison, but the premise seems to imply that they have lied. So years later, things come back to haunt them. I really like this premise. I feel like it's something I've seen a couple times, but I'm still looking for like an all time favorite. So this one, I'm looking uh, forward to it. Plus, I mean, it's kind of a hot pink. We're matching, so it's a good sign. And then the second one is Hellbent by Lee Bardugo. I think a lot of people are going to pick up this one because it's an adult urban fantasy. And I read book one and not gonna lie, I was a little bit disappointed by it, but I really love the world building and really like one of the side characters. So I'm hoping that things are gonna continue more in that direction. And I just needed to know if it was going to be a new favorite. I haven't read a ton of urban fantasy. If you have any recommendations, let me know. So if you enjoyed Dark Academia, um, cults kinda in university, you need to try this series. So I'll let you know how book two goes for me. So if you are interested in trying book of the month, I will put all the information in the description box, including the coupon code if you want to get your first hardcover for $9.99. The next two are probably the books I'm the most excited about, and I want to read them with you guys if you are interested, especially Patreon book club. Um, I think the next, the first one I'm gonna talk about, we're gonna read it together. I'm gonna force you. Um, <laughs> The Wall, I wanted to try to find something, anything really similar to I Who Have Never Known Men because this is an adult dystopian that I am now absolutely obsessed with. I've been talking about it nonstop. I will continue to do so until everyone reads it. And this sounds a little similar-ish. It's another adult dystopian. And this one you're following, this is another thing I mentioned that I wanted to try to find more uh, books where the main female character is actually older than 30 because we don't cease to exist even though it doesn't look like it <laughs> in literature but this one is middle age and one day she wakes up uh, she was traveling in the mountains vacationing and she wakes up one day and she realizes that she's stuck behind an invisible wall so she has to try and survive you know figure out what's going on and uh, have to cope with loneliness because she's alone with a cow hence discover a dog and a cat. I have no idea what's going on. Um, I think that kind of sounds funny. I know it's probably not going to be, <laughs> but uh, yes, character-driven story, imagine, dystopian. I'm looking forward to it. It's not too big and it's also a little bit older. Um, the I Who Have Never Known Men was published, I think in 97. I've been trying to find older sci-fi written by women because I realized that the ones on my shelf, the older ones, the classic ones are pretty much all written by men. So I want to balance things out. And this one was originally published in 1968. So obviously my edition is more recent, but so that sounds cool. That sounds cool to me. So hopefully you feel the same. Uh, and the other one is Remnant Population, which is an adult sci-fi. And this one is also an older woman um, written in, Ooh, this edition is a bit more rough. I try to always get the prettier books in perfect condition as much as possible, but this one sounded too cool to leave behind. It was published in 96. And this one, uh, this woman, she lives on a different planet and she did all the things. She got married, she had babies, they've grown up, her husband passed away, and now she wants to be left alone. She wants to care only about herself. It's about time. So she is living, like I said, on this planet, and one day the corporation that owns it decides to kick everyone off because capitalism. Um, and she stays behind. And then one day people that are part of this uh, corporation come on the planet and they are all murdered. And then she realizes that, hmm, maybe I'm not the only person on this planet. So I don't know if this is going to be more character-driven or more like, horror sci-fi. Either way, I am so excited. This sounds really, really cool to me. And hopefully the reviews that I've seen will be right. Uh, I'm always a bit nervous, by the way, when I tell you what a book is about and I haven't read it because what if I'm here sitting lying to you? But that's what it says in the back. So hopefully that's true. I'm excited. That sounds really cool. Once again, not too big. This one is also about 300 pages. So Yes, I need to read these two. If you have any other recommendations with similar uh, vibes, let me know because I am so obsessed with the other book. I will read anything slightly similar. I have a couple of non-fictions like I've mentioned. Let's go through a couple of them. Uh, the first one, okay. Another thing I've been trying to do is to get the books of authors that I see. Like if I see a clip of them and it sounds cool, I try to go on my way or I want to start going out of my way to pick up the books that they talk about. And I saw an interview or a clip of an, this interview of this author 
uh, who wrote The Seven Necessary Sins for Women and Girls. And it's basically about politeness, or the interview was about politeness and, you know, F politeness. I feel like that's something that we are so brainwashed into, especially girls, young girls. Even though it could, like, harm us, we're still told to be polite at all cost. And she was talking about how, like, who benefits from this? Who decided what is considered polite? And it reminded me of how much as a child I hated to be told to be the bigger person. I feel like that's pretty much related. Because who benefits from it? It wasn't me, the good kid following the rules. It was definitely like the adults being lazy, not wanting to teach the lesson to the bad kid, whatever. And like the bad kid would only learn that they could do whatever they want as long as, you know, they did it to someone that would be forced to be the bigger person. Anyway, clearly I'm still bitter about this. Uh, I'm just glad this is an adult. I don't have to do that, or at least not as much. So I wanted to read that book because of the story she was talking about. I'm not even sure I'm allowed to repeat this. YouTube has been very about uh, choices of words I've been using. So we're gonna keep it vague, uh, but essentially this woman is in court and she was repetitively using the F word while shaking her tatas. So obviously that caught my attention and I bought the book. So we'll see if the story is in the book or not. I'll let you know, but again, not too big and it's bright and fun. More nonfiction books needs to have a good cover because they're always so boring. But yes, that's the first one. Uh, speaking of boring covers, right? Uh, adult children of emotionally immature parents, how to heal from distant, rejecting, and self-involved parents. Today, I'm sharing some trauma. <laughs> I have seen this cover literally everywhere, like must read nonfiction. I didn't realize how short it is. Like it's not even 200 pages, but I've heard so many great things and we'll see if that heals my own trauma or not and I'll let you know how it goes. But it's one of my challenges this year, like I said, to read a ton of nonfiction and I'm really in the mood to do so. So we're gonna embrace it. And I think this is something that I will want to annotate. That's why I wanted to get a physical copy of it instead of just borrowing it from the library because I, I need it. I probably need it. <laughs> No, the nonfiction was actually from my Amazon wish list. Thank you so much, Miranda. This is word, I'm gonna have to call it S, word S. I'm sorry. I, the irony actually, because I am a big proponent of like using the words because words have power. And this is pretty much what this uh, book is about, a feminist guide to taking back the English language. Yes, like I said, the irony that YouTube will flag my videos if I use certain words. A little rent time. In my worst books of the year, I used the C word because it was a quote. It's Murakami's fault, not me. I don't really use the C word, to be honest. And the video was flagged. I had to re-upload it. It was a big pain in the butt. And I didn't re-upload it because I wanted the video to be monetized. It's just because even though they say it doesn't affect it, uh, it they stopped suggesting the video. Literally for six hours until I was waiting for them to review it. Uh, it got zero views from suggested videos. Like it never happens, especially a new video anyway censorship. Um, <laughs> and I found it really annoying because I used the word so many times in the past, in my worst of like a couple years prior. Not a problem, but the C word, that is offensive. So, right? Perfect timing. Thank you, Miranda. Uh, I'm looking forward to reading that one also. I've heard great things. It has been recommended to me so many times, so we'll get to it hopefully soon. Let's go back to fiction a little bit. I have been wanting to find cozy fantasy. I am taking this moment to ask you for recommendations. Maybe I'll do a little vlog. I might not have time in January, but in February I have this big challenge. So March, March I'll do a vlog reading a bunch of cozy fantasy. I want to read some of them. I've realized after reading Legends and Lattes that I like it. And even though I tend to read pretty depressing books, I who have never known men, good example, I, I want to try and find some feel good ones like low stake, low triggers or however you want to call them. I want to find more. So if you have any recommendations, please let me know. But I found this one, which I think might be why, which I'm less into, but I wanted to grab it to remind myself to do that. And I'll try it, obviously. However, the title, let me, let me Google that, actually. I am French Canadian, by the way. And this word is a swear word for us. It's, I know it's like a church related word. If you don't know, basically most of our swear words are related to church because we have a fun history uh, with it. And this is a swear word in French, but apparently you guys pronounce it chalice, chalice, which I can say that, but in French, we don't say it like that whatsoever. Let's see how she makes it sound because I have a feeling it's not good sound. Chalice. Yeah, we don't say it like that. Ah, another fun information. 
<laughs> but French from France and French from Quebec, completely different. Their A's, they sound high and us, they sound low. So they say... Calis. Calis. But we say calis. <laughs> I have never sounded more Quebecois in my entire life. Um, so yes, this is a swear word. So it makes me laugh that this is a cozy fantasy, but... I will attempt it. The reviews are positive. I will go into it with an open mind because, again, I'm aware that this is young adult, not adult. But I feel like young adult and feel good kind of can work together. So let me know if you've read this, if it's worth it, and any other recommendations for cozy fantasy. But just be aware that every time I look at this and say chalice, I think about the other one. So... <laughs> Speaking of cozy fantasy, there's also one that I got an ebook version of um, because it just sounded ridiculously funny. Uh, it's called Beware of Chicken, which apparently is funny, like I said, and it's like a martial art slash farming book. I, I don't know. I don't know. I decided to just dive into cozy fantasy full on. So I saw that one. I was like, that sounds like it's going to be a cozy fantasy. So maybe I'll add that to my vlog when I do the cozy fantasy vlog. If you've seen the cover, it just made me laugh. I had to try. I've also seen this author everywhere and I pick up two of her books to test them. I'm currently not super into the mood of like reading mystery thrillers. I'm sure it's going to come back uh, fairly soon. I usually take a break during the winter and come back to it more for like summer, fall. But I've seen uh, Frida McFadden everywhere and I picked up two of her books to try them. So I'll do a reading vlog or something trying her work eventually, but we have Never Lie and then we have The Housemaid, which I think there's a second book that came out after this one, but we'll see. I, we're going to start with the first one. So yes, two mystery thrillers. This year I really want to try and find some favorites. I mean, I'm always trying to find favorites, but mystery thriller is the genre that does the least well on my channel. Uh, not from you, but from me. I really want to love them, but I've been so unlucky. I'm usually really disappointed. I think it's because I get my recommendations often from the Goodreads Choice Award, like the winners or like the new releases, and they tend to be not my thing. They tend to be more um, domestic thrillers, for example. And like, I'm just, it didn't work for me. I've tried them multiple times. And like, once in a while, I'll find one that I like. That's why I keep going. But I need to go out of my way to try and find some other ones. So I'm going to try these, but I'm going to try to also find some maybe with like a hint of sci-fi. They tend to work better for me. Again, if you have any recommendations, please help me because I love them in theory, but I feel the last couple of years have been really rough for me. I want to find some five stars, so I'm going to make it a point in 2023 to try and find some. Uh, I have two more nonfiction. I am super excited. I'm going to post a video really soon uh, showing you my TBR for nonfiction for the year, so you can, you know, add some to your own TBR if you want to. But this one made me laugh. Um, I'm trying to find some with, like, different topics, like intro on different topics and seeing if that's my thing or not. This one is the story of medicine through the history of transplant surgery. So spare parts. <laughs> I know it's not funny, but it makes me laugh. Uh, it reminds me of this other book that I have on my shelf. Uh, is it Quacker? Quackery? Quackery. Which is about like how doctors have been killing their patients for <laughs> centuries. <laughs> and this reminds me a little bit of that because they, it kind of gone well the first couple of times. There's no way. So um, yes, I'm looking forward to reading that one once again. Not too big. And the cover really attracted my eyes. So yes, um, there are pictures too. I, I feel this is going to be a little bit of a shit show at first. So that sounds cool. Uh, we'll be reading that. And then uh, I also... I have been recommended this book a million times, and it is Men Who Hate Women by Laura Bates, the extremism, the extremism nobody's talking about. I feel like we're talking about it a lot more, but this is basically about like the incel movement, which has been getting worse and worse, and with uh, Andrew Tater Tot, um, it's been the talk a lot more, and it needs to be talked about because it's a terrifying movement. So yes, I've been looking forward to reading that one. Once again, this author has been coming out with a lot of books on the topic and I've heard so many great things so I'm happy to finally get to it. I've mentioned that I like people either reliving their life or uh, their day over and over or like alternative universe and when I see a book with a title like that I assume automatically that that's the point and I pick it up. Uh, this is 22 Murders of Madison May. Does that not sound like it's going to be about this. Well, when you read the thing, it does. This woman, she is an estate agent, and one day one man shows up and tells her that he's, you know, her, the love of her life, but from a different universe. So I'm assuming this is going to be the thing, alternate universe, and I'm 
listen, I'm looking forward to that one. I've been trying to read a couple more before I do a video on the topic, but I'm realizing this is gonna be never ending. I'm never gonna do a video. So I just need to do it and then, you know, I'll post a TBR at the end or something. But yes, looking forward to that one. If you have read it, let me know how it went. But yes, picked it up because I'm a sucker for that trope. And then we have the Bridget Jones or Bridget Jones Diary. I have been collecting slowly but surely a couple books that I've seen the movie, but I haven't read the book, which I usually always start with a book if I can, but I haven't yet with this one because I don't know if it's aged well or not. I have a feeling it hasn't. It reminds me of like Practical Magic, for example. I love the movie and then I read the book and I was like, ooh, this, this aged roughly. Uh, I believe in this one specifically, like the main character says that she's like overweight, but she's like 130 pounds. <laughs> So that should be interesting. This was published in 96. So we'll see, but I do like the movie. We'll see, it's not too big. So I think I'm gonna make it a challenge at one point to read like three books uh, and then watch the movies and compare, let you know which ones I think aged best or which ones you should just skip the book, read a movie or it is worth it to read the book too. So yes, I think that's a perfect example for that. I told you this book haul was a little bit ridiculous. I'm very excited to read so many of these. If you have any that you want me to prioritize, please feel free to let me in the comment section. And also, again, I'm looking for some cozy fantasy recommendations. Uh, that's gonna be it. Thumbs up, subscribe. I will be putting more videos on the screen that I recommend you check out. And I will see you in a coming video very soon. Bye.